Hey everyone, real quick uh, introduction to the, today's video. There's an issue with the audio. I'm not sure if it's Skype or call recorder or my settings. <clears throat> but um, anyway, this is a first time that we've done this or I've done this. And um, there's some issues with the audio. Hopefully you guys will get through it. it. It's not really that bad overall, but there's a couple times the audio drops out and you hear some like buzzing. And I'm going to try to work on figure out how to fix that in the future. But Watch this episode. It's great. I've got my first, you know, Skype interview, and I hope you guys really enjoy it. Thanks. Hello, everybody. Welcome to. Uh, this is the first of hopefully many uh, virtual tastings that we're doing. Uh, as far as I know, this is the only podcast, webcast, whatever you want to call this show, that is doing uh, Skype interviews with winemakers or anyone else that wants to do interviews. Um, so Gary V, take that. <laughs> and, uh, but, um, so I've got, uh, Cindy Costco, um, from, uh, Passaggio Wines, uh, mm -hmm. and she was kind enough to send me a bottle of her, uh, 2008 and, uh, this is really exciting. I'm getting to do something that, uh, I'm really hoping to do more of. So Cindy, let's, uh, let's talk about you. Who are you? What's your story? Kind of, how did you get involved in all this? Everybody has a story, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Um, I'm originally from West Virginia, uh, born and raised there. Um, I used to listen to my grandfather talk about uh, making wine. I used to watch him in the basement making wine, and I think that's how I got the passion. Uh, but I uh, um, moved out here in '04 and followed that passion. Nice. Um and uh, so what, what brought you to, to doing uh, Passaggio and, and what's the name, you know, how did you come up with the name? And, and, uh... The, the, um, the, the Passaggio, you know, my family came over, my, my dad's side of the family came over from Italy, my grandfather did. So I wanted something um, that portrayed that passage that they took from Italy to what they call Passaggio, which means passageway. Got it. Okay. That's awesome. My grandfather's the same thing. Dad's side of the family came here yep. in the 20s, and uh, mom's side right. of the family was already over here for, for quite a while. Um, that's awesome. And um, I, so when I was looking at the website and, and, and doing some research, you, you're you using right? Exactly. Okay, so t tell me how all that works. I mean, I, I kind of have a little bit of – I kind of know how they work. but It's, a, of it's an I'm awesome doing. place. I'm telling okay. you, there's nowhere like it that I know of. Um, I'm actually, I actually uh, am the lab manager here, so I get to see a lot of different stuff that's going on, and we're getting grapes right now as we speak. Um, you can make your own wine here. You can be as involved as you want to be. You can make up to, or from one barrel to as many barrels as you want. We have um, four, four winemakers on staff that will guide you through the process. But we have um, Crush Pad Japan, we have Crush Pad Bordeaux, uh, we have clients in Florida, Maine, Michigan, you name it. They fly out here to sort their own grapes, they get excited, it helps you get excited that you feel that excitement back when they come out here and they're seeing their grapes coming in, they're being able to process them and do their own punch downs and stuff like that. It's pretty exciting. That's awesome. Um, because, you know, the, the, the big, the kind of how, what the inspiration for the actual website 1337 Wine came about was seeing a wine that I thought was 1337, saw it was 337, and then I decided mm -hmm. that would be a great wine label. So it would be. It would be very original. cool. The original idea is to create my own wine. So that, that's hopefully a few years down the road. Um, okay. I really want to actually do one for next vintage, for next year vintage, but I think I have money for all that. But um, – so, uh, you know, that, and that's really exciting because I've heard about Crush Pad before. I know that uh, the Vaniac. Uh, oh, yeah. Wine, I actually just saw a video recently. They, all the, the, the bottling was, the, the labeling was all being done. Uh, i got to buy my, i gotta, I got to put my order in for that still. Um, so, I mean, I've kind of followed it. I've actually been getting all the emails uh, with the Vaniac stuff. So, I don't read all of them because it's kind of like a lot of technical stuff. And I go, uh, okay, cool, thank you. But uh -huh. it's still exciting to, to see all that. And, um, um, you know, and, and Knowing that you're involved in that, that was I thought mm -hmm. that was really great to finding that out. Um, cool. And so, uh, so you've got this Chardonnay, and then you have a 2007, right? I do. Sonoma, mm -hmm. Sonoma Valley or Sonoma Coast. I'm sorry. 
Sonoma Coast. Uh, so, Sonoma, yeah. And then um, you were, we were trading emails. You have a Pinot Noir that you're going to be coming out with too. Is that right? I'm trying. I'm okay. trying. Um, I'm, I'm like you, the the money thing. Um, right. I did get some Pinot Grigio in yesterday, so I will be producing a Pinot Grigio this year. Okay. Um, it was this morning, so it's pretty exciting. That's great. So, um, where the where do you source all your grapes from? Uh, I know this said California, but then the the prior vintage was a Sonoma. Right. So, is it does Crush Pack get its, get the grapes from all over California, or do they get them like for, or other areas? Crush Pad does uh, source fruit plants um, all over California. Last year we got some from Washington, Oregon. Mm -hmm. um, my 07 vintage actually came from the Sonoma Coast, uh, Petaluma Gap, actually, a vineyard up there. Okay. Um, so I decided uh, in 08 I wanted to source my own grapes, uh, bring that cost down a little. So um, I got the 08 grapes from Lodi. Down where near uh, Gallo and uh, I believe Delicato get their grapes from down that area. Okay, that's awesome. Um, let's see what else do I have on here. So okay, the one thing, a couple things. Uh, talked earlier before the Zork. I love the this Zork. thing. I've heard about it. This is my first experience with it. Um, in fact, you can just you know totally reseal this wine here. Um, Perfect. So what was what was the um, reasoning behind why you wanted to use the Zork? Well, also if you also on the label, I'm new generation, okay. and um, I wanted something a little more progressive uh, on the bottle, mm -hmm. so to speak. I live out here in California, you know, right. and um, it is recyclable. Uh, you don't have to worry about cork taint. Um, it's a little cheaper than a cork. Uh, it's bartender friendly. So all those in one package, I couldn't get. I couldn't pass it up. I, I can de I can definitely see the bartender friendly thing because. I've worked in restaurants a long time, and uh, while bartenders and waiters are supposed to have wine tools on them as part of their <laughs> uniform, there's so many times that they don't, and I don't keep it on me, I, cause right. I don't normally have to do wine service as a manager, mm -hmm. but um, this type of stuff, and, 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 the, and the screw cap enclosures, um, same thing, I mean, they're, they're making it much easier for restaurants, um, but this kind of gives you that, that little bit of feel uh, of the cork, and I really liked it, um, and mm -hmm. then... The other thing I want to ask you, oh, this is unoaked. So, uh, it or, is unoaked. So what was the reasoning behind that? Is that a preference that you have? or It's a preference I have. Uh, you know, you, a lot of people were talking about the traditional uh, California Chardonnay, but I'm, you know, I'm not sure that, it's so that that is so traditional. I think it maybe have gone to the really oaky, buttery Chardonnays, mm -hmm. and now I'm seeing it maybe trend back toward uh, the less oak um, I really, uh, my preference is a more crisper, cleaner Chardonnay um, good, that goes good with food. I, I can tell you, I, I share that preference um, the past few years that I've gotten in more in the wine. Um, anytime I've seen, you know, the unoaked or they call them naked Chardonnays, I was like, well, what's mm -hmm. this all about? And I find that I tend to like those Chardonnays better uh, than, than traditional, I guess, oak Chardonnays. So, um, so I'm real excited to try this because... Uh, you know, I, I mean, I do the show and all that, and I just try to do as many different wines as I can. So instead of being like, just do, these are all California. Um, but this is, I, don't, I haven't done, I don't think, an unoaked uh, cool. Chardonnay yet. Um, I may have done one. I may have done one, but I, I haven't done very many of them. So, but, uh, you know, I say let's go ahead and taste some wine. Let's, let's, let's check do it. it out. Um, I think this, this is probably the most fun part for me. All right, so as everybody can see, uh, I'll put the label up a little bit closer. All right, so this is a 2008, and um, on your website, uh, you can purchase this. I think it was for $13, is that right? $13, $13 on the $13. website, yes. Okay, great. Uh, folks, I'll have the link to, to the website down below uh, for Passaggio and for Crushpad um, where you can buy the wine. So uh, and definitely, let's, uh, let's check this out. I'm already liking it. Now, with me, sometimes I have a hard time picking up individual things. You know, some wines I'm better at than others. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm having a hard time a little bit, but 
I mean, I'm definitely picking up a, a, a fruity nose, um, maybe a little floral. I seem to, yep. I seem to, I seem to not get floral a lot of times. So it's, I, I'm not good with flowers. You know, some flowers mm-hmm. I can smell really well, and other flowers I can't. Yep. Like, I, I can smell it's a of it. So I'm getting that out of there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's nice and clean. I'm not getting that butter and, and all that kind of stuff. Right. Let's right, just taste it. Mm. Oh, I like this. I like this. It's nice and clean. It's got some got some good acid to it. Um, yep. I'm glad you um, like it. <laughs> I'm getting kind of like a, a um, kind of citrus, a little bit. It has some citrus on it. Yes. I'm going to drink this. Um, yeah, kind of citrusy. Um, I don't know. The, the word grapefruit comes to mind, but I, I can't – I don't know. Maybe not grapefruit, but I'm getting some citrus type of, of flavors to it and good mm-hmm. acid. And this is, you know, this is what I like out of Chardonnays is I like I like having that acidic uh, – and it's really nice. I, I, I absolutely enjoy this. Um, other – what what do you get out of it? Because you know you know get, this wine a lot better than I do. It, so it has some layers to it, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's some uh, tropical fruit a little bit. Um, there is some citrus in there. The acid is definitely. Um, I think it it's a it's a very balanced wine. It's it also has a uh, heavier mouthfeel than you'll find in most unoaked Chardonnays. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, because a lot of them are pretty lean and thin. Right. I think because of where the grapes where these grapes came from, I think it, it gives it a nice heavier mouthfeel that a lot of people like in their Chardonnays. Um their oaky Chardonnays, right. so to speak. So this is like that without that oak and butter. Um so the 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 area of California you got these from uh what was what was the uh, what was the climate like you know how did that really contribute to to all pretty this? warm during the day uh okay. cool at night it's down it's near the delta so it's pretty cool at night but it's pretty warm during the day okay and that's that's really that's something you're looking for with with chardonnay grapes uh is is having that kind of that cool night weather yeah the cool nights um okay. cool mornings uh, up near the Sonoma Coast, you know, it's really cool in the morning. They have that fog that comes in off of the ocean. Um, so you really want that. It's nice. I really enjoy this, and I'm blown away. I like it a lot. I, I'm going to have a policy to not rate wines when I do when I do interviews. <laughs> okay. Um, and I wouldn't rate this bad at all. I mean, it would it would be a good rating, trust me. But um, I think to be consistent for, for myself, um, I think that I'm, I'm going to have that I'm going to – or not. Um, That's fair. I do like this, and uh, I'm looking forward to pairing this up with some food this weekend. Um, good. Because uh, it's, it's going to be some good stuff. Uh, what do you have uh, – so you talked about having getting some Pinot Grigio coming in and maybe some yep. Pinot Noir. What, what do you have uh, – you have another Chardonnay coming out for, for uh, two. I do have another year. Chardonnay that will be coming out in 2009. Uh, same, gra- same grape source. Um, it'll probably be coming in maybe a week and a half or so. Okay. Be getting those grapes in. So that that'll be so your your harvests are usually September October in California. Yes. Okay. I know that the wineries here in Texas they've been they harvested as early as July at some of these places. Cause wow. Having, yes. Well. <laughs> yeah. They were, I went to a winery um, and I'm hoping to do something. Well, I'm hoping to do a, a live uh, interview with mm-hmm. them since it's close enough. Um, and they were saying that some of the stuff they had harvested in July and definitely in August they were they were harvesting the grapes because they had they had ripened so fast. I guess I mean, we yeah. were having 100 degree weather. Right. These some odd days of 100 degree weather this summer, so it was, wow. it was pretty hot over here. So um, this is awesome. I really I really appreciate you uh, coming on and uh, sending the wine and um, being my first. It's been my uh, pleasure. Interview. Yep. And um, this is awesome. Do you have anything you want to tell uh, everyone who's watching? Just uh, drink an oak Chardonnay. That, that's great. I, I, <laughs> I, I definitely agree with that. This is awesome. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, folks, this is a 
hey, you need to go out and buy this. Hit the website. I'll have the link below. Grab this. They've, and also the 2007 uh, is on the website to buy. Yep. Um, and uh, I'll have the links. I'll make sure I, I put the two S's and the two G's because when I first did it, I was typing it wrong. I was, I think, putting one G in there. I was like, how come I'm not getting where I need to go? <laughs> um, so I'll make sure I get the link right. And um, as always, guys, you know, I really appreciate uh, everyone uh, tuning in. Uh, this is uh, hopefully one of many uh, conversations that I'm going to be having. I, hopefully you'll have it as a Friday uh, thing, so maybe call it a Friday conversation. And, um, you know, as, as always, click the links and uh, friend me up and uh, uh, friend up Cindy because she's on, uh, she's on Twitter. I'll put her link, her Twitter link on there too. Thanks. So uh, make sure, you know, make sure you're – uh, friending her up too, and uh, it's been great. Thanks, uh, thanks for stopping in, and uh, we'll see everybody again next time. Thank you, Mark.